And in business news, India has presented its first federal budget since Prime Minister Narendra Modi returned to power for a third term. Analysts say the spending plan largely managed to strike a balance uh, between trying to meet the demands of disgruntled voters and the other demands of coalition partners in government while keeping the fiscal deficit in check. Investors, however, were disappointed by the budget's increase in capital gains tax. Rebecca Bundon has more from Mumbai. Expectations were high for India's first budget of Prime Minister Modi's third term. He and his party, the Hindu nationalist BJP, failed to win an outright majority in the recent general election. And voters have a long list of concerns to be addressed, including unemployment, inflation and weak incomes. In response, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman delivered a budget that was heavily focused on job creation and rural development. The people have given a unique opportunity to our government to take the country on the path of strong development and an all-round prosperity. The Modi government also had to keep its allies happy, announcing additional funding and infrastructure support for the states of Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, home to two of its key regional coalition partners. The government earmarked 2 trillion rupees, or about 24 billion US dollars, for job creation over five years. This includes giving out one-off cash handouts to first-time employees in the formal sector, including manufacturing. And India has budgeted 32 billion dollars for rural development. Uh, the disparities of income in India have become extremely large uh, and conspicuous over the last few years. So they have tried to uplift them by either reducing their taxes or by, uh, or by trying to give them jobs, trying to give them training. The main opposition Congress party accused the Modi government of copying some policies from its manifesto and said that despite that, the budget didn't go far enough to address economic stress for ordinary Indians. Although some people may have liked to see more in terms of tax relief, there has been some easing of personal taxes with the standard deduction level raised by 50%. This can help to put more money in the hands of the masses and in turn economists say that that can help to boost consumer spending in India. That's something that is much needed, with India's latest economic survey suggesting that India's GDP will grow at between 6.5 and 7% this year, which is down from last year's 8.2%. Despite the government's spending plans, India's fiscal deficit target for this financial year has been reduced to 4.9% from an earlier estimate of 5.1% of GDP. Investors were, however, disappointed that part of the government's tax collections will come in the form of higher capital gains rates, with the short-term capital gains tax rate being increased to 20% from 15%. Analysts say that the measures announced in the budget have the potential to deliver long-term benefits for the country's development and its economic growth, but their implementation will now be critical to their success. Rebecca Bundan, CNA, Mumbai. And staying on that story, Indian stocks falling after, as we just heard, that the government raising the tax rate for capital gains from equity investments and trade in equity derivatives. The administration is trying to calm a buying frenzy that has sent the market soaring to record highs. The benchmark Sensex and Nifty 50 slid about 1.6%, reacting to the finance minister's announcement. They recovered partially, but ending the session slightly lower. The government lifted the tax on stocks held for less than one year to 20 percent from the previous 15 percent. Of this uh, change will take effect immediately. For equities held for more than a year, the tax will be raised to 12.5 percent from the current 10 percent. It's also nearly double the tax on equity derivatives trading with effect from October. 